meet again tomorrow. And you can say how much time has passed between those events. In Einstein's theory, the amount of time that has passed is the length of the path you take over space-time between the events. So it's just like saying, in a, in a sense, what's the distance between Austin and Dallas, right? And you, you'd say, okay, well, it depends what route you go. Well, what's interesting in Einstein's theory, the only complication is the length of the path you take between events is the time measured by a clock that's carried along that path. So that's, that's how much. So if, if you're the carrying your watch with you, and you go between here and tomorrow, <laughs> you go this way, you go off and maybe you fly to Dallas and back or something and then come back again. There's a particular length. Someone else can take a different path, obviously, and so that a different amount of time will pass for them between those two things that happen. Just because of that one fact. A very we, infinitely small but measurable amount of time. It's a tiny amount unless you travel, someone goes close to the speed of light or someone goes near a black hole or something where the, where the space-time is all distorted, th th then you can get big effects. But it's still completely measurable. I mean, th they are quite big effects, these, in the sense that for the satellite navigation system, for example, GPS, um, the, the clocks on the satellites tick at a different rate to the clocks on the ground. And it's a, a quite a big effect, I think from memory, it's something like 30, over 30,000 nanoseconds per day difference mm. because of they're, in, they're in a weaker gravitational field and they're moving and all sorts of things. It's the same thing. But 30,000 nanoseconds, light travels one foot per nanosecond, which is great. I always say that God used imperial units because it's, <laughs> it's 30.8 cents of it. It's one foot, right? It's good. It's one foot per nanosecond. So that's 30,000 feet of position measurement if you drift your clock out by 30,000 nanoseconds. Mm. So it wouldn't work. So, so it's a big effect for when you start using time to measure distance, which is what we do in satellite navigation, GPS. So we have to correct. So the clocks have to be corrected for that effect. So, so it's an effect that we can easily measure with atomic clocks. But it doesn't make much difference to us as humans. Right. But uh, just the, the point is that the laws of nature would allow you to do it if you could go close to speed of light. The, by the way, the last thing I'll say is the, the limiting factor. You might say, well, what happens if you go really close to the speed of light? What happens if you go at the speed of light? Well, special relativity, Einstein's theory, is built such that uh, the, the distance between any two events in the universe along the path of a beam of light between the events is zero. No time at all.